Hello and welcome to my Wellness and Hospitality podcast series. Today, I have a very special guest, Kevin Beutler, who is based in Bali. So he is the CEO of a Bali investment firm, and they specialize in investing in wellness-oriented hospitality products. And currently, he's building a wellness retreat, 31 Keys, in the north of Bali. And when I came across your profile, Kevin, I found it fascinating. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, yeah, super exciting about our meeting, what we talk about. And uh, I think you can give interesting values. Yeah. <laughs> so Kevin, you have such a fascinating background. So you came from fitness, then you went into a bit of finance, and now you're going into hospitality. Tell me about your, you know, your trajectory. Yeah, I mean, even before I study fitness economics and um, yeah, start my own self-employed journey um, in the fitness industry, there I even before before I work on a construction site. So super super important that I um, or interesting that first I was working on this construct uh, construction site when I was young, like 16, 17, 18, and then I see oh I don't want to have this hard work in my life. Um, I want follow more, my, my, my passion. So I really like sports from the, from, from the young age already. And then I said, Hey, I love to go to the gym. I like to build up my body. So let's um, study fitness economics. Um, also with a little bit finance inside, a little bit about managing because I not just wanted to be the typical personal trainer. Yeah. And when I was, or I would say when I was getting more and more successful in the space, building up my YouTube channel, building up my social media channels, then I said, hey, I need new challenges. And then I go into finance. And um, yeah, first, because I see that the normal financial system is a little bit broken, the normal insurances or whatever the people doing for their retirement, it's not really working. And then I uh, found more the way to alternative investments like gold, like silver, and then into the crypto space. And this was a big change in my life. And um, then also I move out to Bali, I buy real estate by myself, I buy land, I plan my own properties. And uh, then I say, hey, why I just do this for myself? There are so many people out there, especially because I come from, from Germany. Let's make this lucrative real estate market, this wellness market, what we can combine with big project through tokenization. Um, yeah, for also other investors. And I would say we do it really successfully. It uh, works really good. And I'm super excited for the future and everything what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> it's fascinating because when we were speaking last time, I remember, because, you know, I work with boutique hotel owners. So pretty much yourself, but, you know, they have this small keys, I say 30 to 50 key properties. Obviously, they've had success in other parts of their life. They want to, they care about the legacy they're leaving behind, the imprint, you know, they have. And, when I found it fascinating just hearing how you raise funding, because funding tends to be the number one challenge for the majority of these investors. Now, you sometimes can not have government funding that allows it, or some people can raise that funding. But the vast majority, let's say 60 to 70 percent, need that external funding. And obviously, they have to do the seed funding, get the people on board. And it tends to be a long process and a difficult process too. So tell me how you get all these different investors. What is your business model? Because for your current retreat, you have something like over 200 investors. I mean, overall, we near 400 investors already. At, wow. At the <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we, we scale this really, really uh, good, good up. And um, I mean, this is also from my personal experience, because like I said, I come from the crypto space and in 2020, 2021, when the crypto market, market goes up. So we had a, I would say, really successful business in this crypto space. We have, have done from 2020 to 2022, I think more than 44 million in sales with crypto education, where we teach the people about the market. And there was some super, super young people. There was 19, 20, 21, and they nearly had, had a million dollars. Yeah? This was completely crazy when this crypto market goes up. But I would say just 5% of all these people who get really, really successful and really wealthy just save their money because crypto, you have to get the right exit. Otherwise, um, your, your money also goes down. And that's why we, it's also one reason why we found up our company because um, mostly our uh, um, community is from the investment community and uh, they need to, 
yeah, a way how to save their money, what they're doing with investment in a safer market. And I mean, Bali real estate, wellness, tokenization is all, all growth market for the next 10, 20, 30 years. And then they have also sa uh, safe investment will bring them the passive income. And um, this is, I would say, one of the biggest benefits that I know how to handle uh, people and that I know through the tokenization process, how I can um, split this big property that everyone can take part. For example, in our first finished project, the Zegara Seaside Resort, we have now 125 investors in and just one and a half year. I mean, we will start building in April 2023. Now in September 2024, we open this already. At, and now after the first month, everything running, we can already estimate that they get a profit for more than 20% in a year. And with real estate, it's, it's, it's amazing. Huh? So. so just to understand, what exactly, because as the other wellness person here, you know more finance. So what does tokenization mean? Tokenization means that we have a, a asset from the real world. So like um, yeah, a house or a big tower or even it it's even can be art. Yeah. So art or even a company and everything get, um, can get into shares so that people um, can take part on this project. For example, there is a project, it's one million and we make thousand shares. Each sh share is one thousand dollars. So possible is for thousand people to take one little piece of this property and get their share of the income. And um, I think this is a really revolutionary way who's just started, I think, in 2022. 2022, just a little, little bit, even, even people who are good into crypto, who know about crypto, they're not really know about tokenization. And there we already have seen early this vision and we were saying, hey, in 2024, in 2025, up to 2030, I think it's a $16 trillion market until then. Um, and we was see this vision early, started our process, for sure. It was not easy, not many people understand. But now, after the first project is finished, after we have now, like I said, 400 investors in the company, the second project, the retreat and wellness center, going already in the construction phase, there we see that now the mainstream more and more see, hey, it works what they're doing, and it's a great concept, because normally you cannot take part on a $10 million project when you not have $10 million. But um, when you have the possibility with 10,000, 20,000 to take part and get even much, much higher returns, it's a big game changer for the real estate industry, I would say. Yeah. So just to understand, let's say I miss Joe Bloggs. I have bought a land in, in, a, in a location and I want to build a wellness retreat, let's say 30 key wellness retreat. And yeah. the funding required is 10 million euros, let's say. So with this tokenization, so I am the asset owner, like, I mean, I own the land and the project that I want to create is this retreat, but I'm getting funding from, let's say, a thousand people or 500 people. Is that the way it's working? Um, not, 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 not exactly because then it would, then it would be up to you. This means like the people give you the money and you have the responsibility and the investors not really have the safety with tokenization. We found a company in this case, the Luvina retreat and wellness, um, um, yeah, investment group, and they own 80% of all the business shares. So they, 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 with, with the smart contract running on the blockchain with their, with, with their shares, they are owner of this company and the other 20% our, our company have to buy invest. So this means like we have a notary contract who's already approved by the laws and everything um, that we managing this and we get 20% of the profit and um, the investment company who fund this project. So all the investors, they get 80% of the, of the profits of this project. And this is how we, how, how we build this up. Yeah. So for someone who wants to create, let's say a legacy project and I'll, and I'll define a legacy project. So these are owners that I think they're putting their, they're betting their next like 20, 30 years on this property. They want to be involved in it. So if they own 20% of it and then the rest is owned by another company which has all those shares of 80%, what benefit is in it for them? 
Mm -hmm. I would say that they um, they they have to have, have have to funding for sure, and they have a big community. And I think especially for a retreat and wellness center, I mean now we just have sell from the nine thousand uh, seven hundred shares, we have to sell around two thousand shares. Um, so I mean for the first funding round, more than two million dollars is already good. Um, but uh, we have now like in this in, in this project, I mean together I said four hundred investors. In the first we have one hundred twenty five. Now in this we have two hundred. 70 and uh, i would say in the end of the luvina pro project maybe we have 600 700 investors and when we now just imagine that every invest investor just come for one week there then we already have a super super high occupancy period and now we also have some benefits in for family and friends for example investors de depending how many shares they, ha they they have they can give up to 30 percent discount also to family and friends so this means like we have a huge community also for example if we want to do a retreat or we do a finance mastermind or we do the uh, next healthy nutrition mastermind or whatever we just can make announcement for all our investors hey are you interesting the date is this um or um do you know someone who's interested you can give them a discount and this is super easy for us to fill this retreats and um yeah also great great marketing i mean we see this in the first project for example google reviews yeah it's not so easy for a new business to get good, good google reviews we just put one time in our investor group hey we set up our google account um just leave a comment we have over hundreds five star reviews and people who recommend our resort and that's why in the first full months we had the occupancy pin rate i think from 70 percent and this just after opening uh, without big marketing and anything, it's a great tool, I would say. Yeah, I, I agree because, you know, the biggest challenge that boutique hotel owners have, you know, you're talking about individual, not a brand, you know, big hotel chain. They need sales offices. They like, you know, they need to get people in. They require, they, they rely on, you know, booking TripAdvisor to actually get people in. So... Yeah. Having the actual investors going and being kind of a mini salesperson and promoting it kind of makes sense. And something interesting you said, so when they come to sleep or when they come, let's say, for a week to the retreat, the investors have to pay or they get a discount. So how does that they get work? A discount. They get a discount. They get, get a discount up to um, 35% because we was also thought, thought about us, hey, if, if you investors, can you stay a week for free? But then we was calculate if every investor just come one week for free. So the, the business doesn't make sense. We will broke our business with this. So we, so we cannot do it. This doesn't make sense. Um, but like, uh, but, but a discount and a discount what they can give to family and friends. There we have a model from one to nine shares. I think from nine to 25, from 25 to 80. And then depend how much shares you have, um, that many discount you get then, yeah. That's very, very smart and a very different way of doing hospitality. That's when I was speaking to you, I was thinking, wow, I've never, that's a very, um, you know, uh, it's piqued my curiosity because I've never seen, you know, this model being applied successfully in our field and it works for smaller investors. It really does. And yeah. How do you deal with the problem with control? Because obviously you only have, let's say, 20% of this and 80% is divided among several hundred investors. When it comes to deciding how to manage or operate the asset, so the asset is a retreat, Yeah. how does that work? Um, this is a good point because the investors, they like a silent partner. This means like they get the profits of the business. Also, they even if something goes go, goes wrong, this is our risk. So we have to pay, we have we have to pay for this. So they they not have to um they not 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 they they not, not 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 need need to pay again or something like this. So this is the safety for the investors, and um, but I mean for sure we have the authority. I mean mostly we ask our investors if if there is important decisions. Yeah, we have a group together. We ask the investors. Um, but for example. I don't know, we're going to the design of the resort. Hey, the yoga mat have to be yellow or they have to be green. We don't would ask our investors. <laughs> random, random, <laughs> just, 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 just the things we're making sense where we have to do um, taking decisions together. This we're doing. There's also a nice function of the blockchain that we can make a governance voting. We had already because um, the Luvina Return Wellness Center in the beginning, we was planned um, smaller. 
just on maybe the half of the land. And then we was thought, hey, it makes sense to make it bigger, to get more sauna, to get more, get, get a beauty clinic in and um, get, get, get some extra income streams. Then we ask our investors and I think we are 100%. They said, yeah, for sure, let's do it. The land in the north is still, um, still a great price. It's not a crazy high like in the south and Changu way or not where you need millions of dollars to just buy a little bit land and the north is still really good available. And um, yeah, then we make it now bigger. Now I think now we're on near one hectare and um, yeah, have have more different income streams. And this is uh, this is the great thing that that we that, 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 that we're working together with our investors. It's a little bit like, a, I don't would say like a family because I mean, we have the same goal. This is also nice. Other developers, they just find the investors. They want to sell them the villa and say, okay, here's your key. Bye-bye. So we have 20% of this project. So this means like our biggest interest is that this property have the maximum returns and is really successful. So we completely on one side with our investors. I think this is also a great point. Yeah. And for an owner who has a piece of land, let's say they go with this tokenization model, they keep 20% of their, the bill, you know, the revenues, their profits. And a separate company is created where that 80% is spread across silent partners, hundreds of them. And they gain the funding they need, like how you have gained the funding to actually start building, to make sure things are done to the quality and any big decisions that's done on a blockchain vote. That sounds all fantastic. And it's also, as you said, you know, you're driving community, you're getting other perspectives in. What are the negative aspects? of this what do you think people need to or the red flags or people need to just be aware of i mean tokenization is a quite new market so um also depending where you are on the world you have not the uh, legal regulations in many countries that's why i'm super happy that indonesia have this already i think it's just some countries in south america I think in Dubai you can do it, but it's more like you have to trust the the the, the company from the legal way that you really have a notary contract. I, I would say Indonesia is one of the most forward countries. So if you invested in tokenization, um, for sure, be careful because not everyone do it in the right way. Um, because you have to really make sure that you have that, that, that you have also the legal papers. That's why we we do it on different ways. We do it for sure on the blockchain, but also we have the legal notary contract. I think this is one important part what the people have to um, think about. Then definitely where you invest, because for sure many people have nice ideas. The property looks amazing, but is really so much tour tourism in this area? For example, when I see now, I mean, I was last week I was in Thailand. I like Thailand. Thailand is amazing, but on in some seasons, especially in the raining season, there is nearly the even the biggest hotel that just rent out a, free, a few rooms, or even here in here in Vietnam, Da Nang, also super beautiful. But you not have that much tourism that you can get 10, 20, uh, or even more percent, and um, that's why it's super important that you really have this ha have in mind that you're going into areas who are growing and um, yeah, not that you have maybe just a high season from three months in a year and the rest. You don't get your profits. I think this is an important point, what you need to think about. Yeah. And I think also, you know, the smart investment, you and obviously you, you truly believe in wellness, but if someone's going for a wellness retreat or you have these masterminds or these high performance groups, they don't come in high season. They would come more in low season. They don't really go for that beach weather, right? They go for it. Their reason for visit is different. So you kind of curb seasonality. Uh, mm. You know, because you're just attracting a different kind of clientele, as you said, they they have the same purpose as you guys, you know, so they're on the same, same thing, all right, on the same page. And what other things? Tell me other things about how, how you see this working. Mm. I mean, for, for, for me, it's also that, that, that I built now this retreat and wellness center because it's also like a, like a passion for myself because this was what I was studying a long, long time ago where I never had in mind, hey, I built up my own retreat and wellness center. But I, I learned already in the, in the, in the, in the theory um, how to set something like this up, what is the important points, um, also a little bit managing tool because, I, I mean, I, I have the, the, the knowledge little bit in the theory, but I, I don't do the management. I, I want a professional management company for sure for this. 
But um, it's nice to see that you um, can create your concepts and it's just the idea in the mind and then it's getting more and more into the reality. Also with our first project in Lusa Jenningal, it's just amazing. We go there on this neighbor island and we say, see in Zanu in Bali is in New Harbor, on the neighbor island is in New Harbor. Hey, the infrastructure will grow. Let's start. And then you go there. I mean, it's just one and a half years ago. I, I walk through the land. There's just some 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 fishers, or there is like they 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 farming seaweed there. It's just a little bit piece of piece of land with a jungle. And one and a half year later, you have a luxury resort there. And uh, you can meet people. You can come together with the people there, and they say, "Oh, it's so amazing spot." And then you, and then this is also the vision of this retreat and wellness center that you're coming together with people who have uh, a different mind. I mean, I think we're in a big, big change now. I mean, the the election just uh, in America was just a few days ago. I would say overall on the world, I would say now come big, big changes. I hope all the war they will they will stop more and more, and the, the world will coming closer together. And I would say then we need on this planet more, um, yeah, more places where like-minded people can come together and can create even bigger versions. And I think the people who think about their health, think about their well-being, and um, going to such retreat and wellness center, it's, I would say, is the perfect spot, um, yeah, to do something like this. Yeah. You know, you're right because many people care about their well-being. They care about their health. They care about living longer and the quality of life, living longer and not having a good quality of life. And that old model of, you know, when we retire, the state will look, of us, look after us, I think is kind of archaic and people know that they have to look after themselves. They want to look after themselves. They want to give back to community and they want it to be growth for everyone. So commercial, not only one person taking the growth, everyone taking the growth. And he said, it becomes bigger and bigger. And, you know, I'm seeing this turn up just with just the clients I'm working when they reach out, you have them from Africa, you know, North America, different parts of the world. And you're finding a definitely this new, new generation, this new wave of thinking and investing, which is, you know, it is, it's definitely, um, it, it's rethinking, it's reshaping the industry. And I think it is so, so needed. Uh, my industry got a bit archaic. Um and yeah, it's just fascinating with this tokenization, this different way of funding. And it allows other people to do these projects because normally it's not available to everyone. Who can go and raise 10 million, 20 million, obviously depending on which part of the world. You can't raise that. You can't always rely on government funding. You can't rely on people wanting to be a silent partner. So extrapolating tokenization from art and blockchain you've put it into hospitality and wellness that's a that's a very very smart move and also you're looking at it in terms of the commercialization so once it's open how are you going to get people because that has been the biggest Achilles heel for many wellness retreats they find it hard to fill at first so you know they have a longer incubation period of getting people to be aware of them but if you're getting the investors to come themselves, you had the friends and family rates, that's that's money you would give to a tour operator anyway. In terms I mean, of this, is just, this is yeah just one 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 option. I mean, um, as when then we see in, in especially in Bali. I mean, Bali is already famous all over the world for this wellness, uh, for this retreats, for yoga, for uh, yeah, for for everything in this in in this area. And um, even when I see it, uh, yeah, last time I think we also talk about this, this Bali time chamber just for men, one kilo meat a day. They book 12 months in advance. They completely, uh, they go viral on social media. And uh, yeah, I mean, we have a great location in the north of Bali. So the the new government of um, Indonesia, they just announced that they built the airport just, I think, just 40 minutes away from our retreat and wellness center. The north is the next big uh, big area in Bali who will develop more and more. So I would say we directly at the, at the right time, at the right place. So, yeah. And in terms of wellness, because obviously you are very involved in wellness, what kind of trends are you seeing in your market? Um, so in the in, in the wellness industry, I mean, when when we um see, see now about more my expertise with doing bodybuilding, doing fitness, I would say there is uh, a lot going well from this 
unhealthy fitness muscle growing like with with the testosterone with the steroids and everything there is some something that's that's called peptides um i think this is an interesting point because it's also also legal and i, I i'm the tb500 and ppc I, i don't know what i mean this is like for healing for the body and i see some crazy reports like people burning all their skin yeah and they heal in in, in a few weeks they heal all the skin what we normally need a lot of operations or for example if they have break their leg and they need a few months they recover in weeks so it's they say like the vul, vul, wolverine from 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 this movie because it's healing so fast this is something what is super interesting um then for sure like the normal normal things like you're doing sauna doing ice bath what is good for your body but um i would say also this cryo cryotherapy i think also super interesting uh, concept um i think we also want to integrate this in the retreat and wellness center and um yeah all different kind of sports yeah so this is i mean in 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 the end when you think about wellness about health it's always it's always about sport it's about getting your body fit you can you can get so many things from outside yeah but if you're not uh, not 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 change it inside and also for the me mental health i think this is also one big point because people always think about wellness and fitness i have to do more sport i have to eat healthier but i would say when you're healthy in your mind then your body automatically get also more healthy so i would say this is also some really big point what we want to focus on so that we see it as a, yeah as a co complete thing and um, about the mental health about the physical health and bring all this together yeah and in terms of for example sustainability or more specifically let's say regenerative tourism right um wellness travelers are known or thought to be more conscious they care more about the environment they care about how they integrate with the community how they're spending the money um where they're spending the money how do you see you know what you are doing when when it comes to regenerative tourism so you're regenerating the area yeah i mean uh, that's also why we're choosing the north because there we still really in the nature yeah this is one super super important point because i think when you're in the retreat and wellness center and you just have big streets or you're feeling like you're in bangkok this is not this 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 feeling that you really can come down so we have waterfalls in the near so this means also for our retreat guests that we can make some day trips going into the nature um This is something important. Just one and a half kilometers away, we have the um, yeah, we have the 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 north, the north um, the 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 ocean where we have dolphins, we have shark whales there. Um, what you can see near every day, and that's quite amazing. And also, we integrate a lot of nature. We just have a deal with the with, with the village that the land next to us, so it's like going the hill down, and we can use all this. I think it's even one hectare more to make like this. This forest in a more nice way that the people that we can make a walking um, around there that the people can go directly next to our our resort walking around in the forest being in the nature and um, yeah I think this is one of the biggest parts what we what we integrate more that that the people living close really to this nature and have this real Bali feeling um, yeah I think this is one important point yeah. Yeah, it also increases employment, gets it kind of integrated to the rest of the, the community around there, which is fantastic. And is there anything else you'd like to add? Because it's been such a fascinating conversation um, about bringing tokenization into the funding world of hospitality products. And I think this is so useful for our boutique hotel owners. Um, before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, I would say this is great, great concepts for the future. I mean, um, the tokenization process. So like like, like you said, this is uh, ex exactly our expertise. So um, we're also super open to help others because we talk with many other real agencies. They they say, ah, I hear about this, but I don't know how to, how to get into. And this is also some something what I always say. I like to give. I like to share my knowledge. That's also why I directly agreed to make the podcast with you because it's not, not nothing. Some it's not knowledge what I need to hide and other can copy this. I don't have this mindset. I've, I I'm happy if other people also doing this concept and take also more people on the journey. I mean, it's good for everyone. Yeah, when everyone have a win win situation that we create a nice space for people who during the holiday or doing their retreats that the investors get a return, we build up our company, we get more reputation, we do more successful project, even better for us. And um, yeah, so everyone, everyone win in the end. Yeah. 
I like that. I like that because I'm thinking of, okay, the three key takeaways. I can imagine myself writing the article for this and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to sit and really listen to this and then prepare the nice three key takeaways. But yeah, thank you so much. It's been very, very, very interesting. Um, and yeah, thank you for all you do in the industry. Also, you are very generous with your information and you know it's it's refreshing to see that. So thank you very much. And um, yeah, looking forward to keeping in touch with you. Perfect. Amazing. <laughs>